This is Rick Lee James, and the music you are hearing is from my new album, Thunder. The title track, Thunder, is a never-before-released song by the late Rich Mullins. There are also 12 other tracks made up of original music, hymns, and readings to guide the listener on a journey. You can buy Thunder today on clear vinyl and CD, or stream it on Spotify, Apple Music, and almost every other music streaming service. Thunder, hear it today at rickleyjames.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash voices in my head. That's audibletrial.com slash voices in my head. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. That's audibletrial.com slash voices in my head. Give it a try today. Welcome to Voices in My Head, the official podcast of me, Rick Lee James. I'm a recording artist, a singer, a songwriter, an author, a worship leader, and an ordained minister in the Church of the Nazarene. The Voices in My Head podcast is where I discuss music, movies, books, pop culture, theology, and more with friends, colleagues, and sometimes just by myself. Now make sure to let me know what you think of today's episode by leaving me a review on iTunes or by tweeting at me, at Rick Lee James on Twitter. And please join my mailing list at rickleejames.com, where you can receive an email every time a new episode is released. And by the way, in case you're interested in a daily dose of kindness and encouragement beyond this podcast, I also run the Twitter account, at Mr. Rogers Say, where I post daily quotes from Fred Rogers, one of the voices in my head. Well, I guess that's it for the intro, so sit back, relax, and listen to the latest episode of Voices in My Head. Slugs and Bugs creates music and stories full of faith and silliness for the whole family to delight in and sing for years to come. They believe Slugs and Bugs kids would find it natural to remember Jesus in their homework, in their friendships, and one day in the parenting of their grandchildren. Slugs and Bugs began with the premise that songs are one of God's powerful tools for building strong relationships. When songs inspire laughter or deep spiritual thought, they can transform a routine car ride into a sweet family experience. Over time, that kind of influence can profoundly impact the culture of a family. Slugs and Bugs have a brand new TV show which encourages families to sing together, laugh together, and think deeply together about the meaning of life and the nature of God. Randall Goodgame is the heart and soul and creator behind Slugs and Bugs, and he's here with us today to tell us the latest and the greatest news. Randall Goodgame, welcome back to Voices in My Head. Thank you, Rick. It's so great to be here with you, man. Well, I am always so glad to get to talk to you, and I still feel terrible because last time we had scheduled an interview, I think it's been like a year or a half ago now, and I was in Nashville running to about 17 different meetings while I was there, and I (laughs) I completely missed ours when we were supposed to get together, and I still feel terrible about that. But thank you for coming back on the show and and talking (laughs) about some of this new and exciting stuff in your life. Oh, man, it's super fun, and it, it always makes me feel great. Whenever anybody ever stands me up, <laughs> I've made that mistake so many times. It just helps me to to feel like we're all we're all in this human being experience experience together. Certainly. Well, you know, and you're kind of among an elite club because I think I think we're up to like 340. Let's see. I think I think this episode is actually going to be episode number 342. And I think I've only made that mistake maybe twice or three times. So you're kind of in like an elite club of people that I've stood up. So, you know, <laughs> wow. I don't know if that makes you feel special yeah. or not, but I it, totally unintentional. But I'm so glad that we, <laughs> we have the chance to be back together today. Um, there, the new Slugs and Bugs show is so much fun. And as we get started here today... Uh, I wanted to share a message for you from my son that he just recorded before school this morning because oh he really, really loves the the Slugs and Bugs show, but he also really just loves Doug the Slug. That's like, I think, his, <laughs> new, his new hero, and normally he will talk your leg off, but this morning when I told him, you know, I'm going to be talking to Mr. Randall later today, 
and it was as if I was going to be interviewing Bono. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was, and he kind of, he kind of got all silly. You'll hear on the message here this morning. He didn't talk as much as he usually does, and he kind of got starstruck, and he's giggling, and he's usually much more like verbose <laughs> than this. But here we go. If you want to hear, I'm going to try to play it across the microphone for Ooh. our listeners and everybody to hear. Okay, this is yeah. what this is what he said. So, Alex, would you like to tell Mr. Randall anything about slugs and bugs? Doug is sluggy. <laughs> Doug is sluggy? What do you so like? Funny. What do you like about Doug? He eats sweets. He eats sweets? <laughs> and what's your favorite song that Doug sings? Teaser, 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 dog. Cheese do, cheese do. So he got a little shy then, but around our house, we're singing that cheese dip, cheese dip, Mexican Rhapsody song all the time. It's like nonstop. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, sweet Alex. Alexander, what a what a sweetheart. Please thank you for sending me the message. I will, and I will definitely play your message for him, for sure, because he, he will just love that. But we are, are big fans of, of slugs and bugs around here. Uh, we've loved your music for a long time, and now you've got books, and the, the new television show is, is just amazing. So let's talk about it a bit today. Um, you know, the Cheese Dip song is, is something we've already talked about, but you have a number of songs that are just incredibly catchy. And this whole thing really started back uh, with your, your first uh, album back, I think it was in 2008. And uh, it was, I believe, Slugs and Bugs and Lullabies was the first album that you and Andrew Peterson did together. I wonder if you could just take us on a little bit of a journey, starting from that starting point and kind of leading to the present on some of the exciting things that have just been happening over the years with Slugs and Bugs. Sure. Uh, a little trip through memory lane with yeah. the Slugs and Bugs universe. Well, so it started... Um, actually, it was 2006 when Andrew and I recorded uh, Slugs and Bugs and Lullabies. Oh, okay. Um, at Andrew Osenga's house, who you just had on recently. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, our, our mutual friend. Um, I, Andrew and I had been writing songs for our kids and w kind of about our kids for years and just decided to make a record um, uh, for fun of those songs. So we put it together. One of the one of the songs, one of the ones that I wrote had this lyric in it that said, God made slugs and bugs and rats and bats, etc. Um, so we called, we titled the record slugs and bugs and lullabies because it had some lullabies on it. And that was it. We made it in 2006, came out in 2007. Um, and that was, there was no big plan. It was just something fun to have. Hmm. And then Veggie Tales got a hold of it and called us and invited us to come write silly songs for Bob and Larry. Hmm. So, which we were so pumped about and had, we had raised our kids on, on veggie tales. So we did that for a couple of years. And Rick, that was kind of, for me, a big turning point because the making of the first record was just for fun yeah. and writing for my, for our kids. And then once, um, writing for veggie tales helped me realize how much I loved thinking about families when I was being creative. Mm. And thinking about how I could um, impact them and what I might have to offer or to say through my gifts and experience, it was just more motivating and exciting and challenging and felt like just kind of the opportunity that I didn't know that I had been looking for my whole life. Mm. Um, and so that's – and that was in – that was like around 2007, 2008 – so that by the time 2009 rolled around, I had um, decided to uh, tr do a tour, a, con a concert tour of mm -hmm. the songs that I had written for that new for that old CD, um, and really very quickly um, realized I want to keep doing this. Mm. So uh, that we did our I did my first Slugs and Bugs show in 2010, and then. Um, that 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 winter and Christmas made the Slugs and Bugs Christmas record, mm. um, and then uh, the next year, next year made Slugs and Bugs Underwear, which has the Mexican Rhapsody song right. on it that you uh, re referenced. Sure. Um, and uh, then we were homeschooling 
uh, our kids for a couple years during that time. And part of my job was to teach the kids uh, music and, and Bible. So part of Bible was scripture memory. And I was doing such a bad job getting them to memorize scripture until I started writing melodies for mm. the messages that I wanted them to memorize. It worked so well for them. And it was honestly so fun and enriching for me that uh, I thought, well, maybe the different slugs and bugs fan families out there might enjoy it and benefit from it. So that's yeah. I mean, the very first sing the Bible CD um, thinking that maybe that would, I would just do that and then do another silly song record after that. But it was again, another bit of a turning point for me because it was so uh, meaningful to me to make the record and to think deeply about how to present those songs mm -hmm. uh, that I knew even while I was making the first one that I was going to want to do another one. And then um, it proved to be a resource for so many of our families that listened to the music that it just kept going. So I, I made four of those uh, Sing the Bible CDs in a row. And um, over the last couple of years, I uh, have started writing children's books and and then, yeah, now this past spring we did the TV show. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And what a what a wonderful thing to see. I mean, it's, it's so obvious that you're gifted in this area. And it's not an easy thing, I wouldn't think, um, to write songs for children uh, in the first place. But then to write songs that I think are just as much fun for adults as they are for kids um, is really an amazing thing. And uh, I, I think we have used uh, every one of your Slugs and Bugs uh, CDs at, at some point over the years in our house, but I know we've also used them in Bible schools for different songs and scripture memorizations. And wow. uh, you, you have such a gifting, and I'm so glad that God is blessing the things that you're doing in this area because there just isn't a ton of uh, – uh, there aren't a ton of people doing this really uh, at the level and, and the quality that you're doing it at. So we're very grateful for you for sure. Thank you so much, Rick. It's well, really – yeah, a blessing to get to do it. I love it so much. I kind of always tell people I can't believe I get to do it. <laughs> well, and that that is very clear that that you're enjoying yourself, and and that comes through a lot on the new show as well. And I want to talk about that um, because we really do in in our house. It's it's only been out for what maybe a month or two now. Uh, the new show, I think. Um, um, barely a month, if that. I mean, uh, maybe three or four weeks. Okay, so it's it is brand new. I knew it hasn't been very long. Um, but when we showed it to my son, who's six, um, I'm, it was like right away. He wanted to, can we watch another one? You know, he was <laughs> so involved with it. Um, he's been bringing it with, I've been teaching a, a study on Sunday nights at our church, kind of a limited uh, series that we're doing. And he wants to go early with me so he can use the DVD player at church uh, and, and watch Slugs and Bugs before everybody gets there. And then <laughs> when everybody comes in for the study, he wants me to keep it playing so he can tell them about different stories and different songs that are happening on the show. So that that tells you, I mean, at least in my mind, that's really connecting, you know, for, for a six-year-old. Uh, who has a lot of other things. I mean, and, and this is a six-year-old that, you know, he likes Avengers and he likes everything else that, you know, is, is being aimed at him in that age group. But the fact that he chooses slugs and bugs over a lot of those things now, it really makes my heart feel really good, and I'm so glad for that. Um, wow. So, so let's, let's talk a bit. Um, I, you know, you have really created – like a family around this uh, and a whole slugs and bugs universe i guess i should say with characters and i love seeing the guest shows and you know you already mentioned andrew osinga i was so surprised we were we were watching the episode the other night and i was like hey that's andrew he was just on my show last week you know <laughs> and uh you know i'm seeing these people that i know and love and they and they're doing such a great job Tell us a little bit about what is involved in making these shows and some of the people that are that are helping you create this together, this sort of family of slugs and bugs. Well, first of all, let me say it is such a sweet um, uh, perk of doing something like this to be able to invite your friends to come and be a part of it. I mean, it's just like being at the playground because um, – I've never done anything like this before. I've never never been in TV or, you know, shot a commercial or done anything like mm. this. So um, as we were putting together the 
the plan for what this show was going to be like, very quickly it was you know, very inspiring to consider um, having guest guest stars for every episode. I mean, a lot like the Muppet Show did, but um, to know that in Nashville, so many of my friends are people that I would want to introduce the world to if I had the opportunity. Yeah. So, um, so to get to invite Andrew, uh, both Andrews and um, like Thomas McKenzie and Sally Lloyd Jones and yeah. the Sutton and, and Russell Moore and so many of the people that I are, I get to bring into the Slugs and Bugs universe are people that I'm so proud to know, and uh, it's a, a, a wonderful privilege to get to introduce them to anyone that's watching. Um, as far as getting the the you know, figuring out what the show was going to be like. Um, I sat down with Chris Wall, the producer, and um, we had started to kind of dream about what it, what kind of show we wanted to make. And f uh, for me, I knew that I wanted the over overarching goal of the show is to model discipleship. Um, it's what I've always wanted to try to present through the CDs is this – um, picture of what it looks like and feels like to try to walk through the world as like belonging to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so since, um, anyway, yeah, I talk, I could easily get off track talking about that. No, no, please feel free. This, um, this is great. Well, the, the fact that Jesus, you know, I talk a lot in concert about how in three out of four gospels, Jesus is talked about saying how you can't come into the kingdom unless you come like a child. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to remember that for myself and help adults to remember it and to affirm kids in that. Like you are, you are our models for how to come to the Lord mm -hmm. um, in all of your earnestness and your messiness. Um, and uh, when um, and, 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 and their silliness. Yeah. So um, part of uh, building a world where we can um, – I mean, part of the gift of doing things in, in, with ch in children's ministry is that you're like ground zero is be like a child. Hmm. So right already you're starting in the place where Jesus wants you to be. So um, – so if we're going to build a show around that, then um, what what do kids love, and what what about the Slugs and Bugs universe um, can play into that that's already kind of created? Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Chris Wall, the producer, he and his family they're, they're longtime Slugs and Bugs fans, hmm. and he at one point early on said to me that his family, his kids, feel like they already know the Slugs and Bugs world. Huh. They kind of imagine it, like some of the characters. I don't know how familiar you – I guess you said you're familiar with the records. So mm -hmm, like sure. the, the Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society and the, you know the monsters and, and this world that has sort of started to evolve um, and underneath the songs, they kind of imagined already. So yeah. we, uh, we started to just flesh out characters, who they might be, what, what we wanted, the kinds of characters um, we wanted and what they would represent. And so eventually we landed on a slug and a bug, Doug and Sparky, mm -hmm. and um, and then a couple of the raccoons from the Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society. Um, and they represent the kids yeah. in, in, in the workshop. So we get to kind of talk to them. Um, and then the children that are watching um, hopefully absorb the way that we interact, realizing that it's all for them. Hmm. That's amazing. And, and you know, just for people that may not have seen the show yet because it is so new, um, the, the show is really set up each episode in this workshop. And when you go into the workshop, it almost has a feel of, um, I guess I would say almost a, you already mentioned the Muppets because there are there are you know, puppets in, in the workshop that, that represent uh, the, the children, you know, really the characters, the slugs, the bugs, the raccoons, things like that. 
Um, and then there's guests that stop by, which almost has an element of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood to it in some ways where, you know, the, the people stop over for a visit or they'll play music and share different talents and skills. And, and there's an episode that, you know, has to do with uh, different cultures and, and food and things like that. Um, and then it really has almost a, uh, if you blend those things together with some of the the humor and the good-natured silliness of like Veggie Tales too, as as you've already referred to. It's kind of like this. Um, it it doesn't feel derivative of any of those things, but it kind of is a perfect blending of uh, some of those things that have come before. And and the way it is pulled off is so well done. I'm I'm curious about some of your your puppeteers and some of the voices behind it. Um, what what goes into to getting that all together and and kind of you know setting up those scenes like that? Yes. Wow. Well, Chris, uh, Rick, let me just respond to – I mean, that is so wonderful. Thank you for the gift of that uh, expression of how you've received it because it's just so so rewarding to to hear that that's how you and your family are, are seeing it mm. because all those different shows did influence us, those and, and more. Um, and, of course, every time you make something you, you do, you want it to feel like something new. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but – I was so influenced by the Muppet Show and so, so many of and the diff, Mr. Rogers and the different programs that you mentioned. Um, so to be to be uh, in, even in the same ballpark is a, is a great encouragement. Well, um, in my opinion, you have joined the pantheon for sure. You're there. <laughs> so. Well, and the puppeteers are a huge piece of why I feel like it. Th things work so well because they're so gifted, so talented people. And I, I didn't realize, and I know most people probably don't realize how, how a puppeteer, a great puppeteer is like a great actor. Yeah. Um, the, the, see the artists, the puppeteers that play Sparky and Doug are both guys that worked with Jim Henson wow. and work on Sesame street. Um, just really, savvy subtle um actors with their puppets hmm. and um we auditioned a bunch of different puppeteers they send in um videos of their performances mm -hmm. and it is amazing how you can kind of tell where one puppet totally captivates you and brings you in and, and you just can't even you don't even you forget that it's felt yeah. whereas another and another puppet you you can't you can't quite forget it because they aren't quite as captivating in how they just a little tilt of the head here. Yeah. Um. A, a one of the puppeteers, uh, Ricky Ricky Boyd, who plays Doug the Slug, he mentioned that a big part of of playing a puppet is listening, hmm. because um so many puppeteers when they're not talking they're just sort of there. Yeah. Um. But what helps you to what helps to draw you in and for the situation that you're watching to become real is that you see the puppet that's not talking, listening mm. by looking around at other people that are in the room and by tilting their head and how they think about what is being said like a real actor would in a scene. Yeah. So um, working with them was just fascinating. I should say their name. So Alyssa Honeycutt from California plays Maggie, James Kemp from up in Kentucky plays uh, Sparky. Uh, John Kennedy down in Florida plays uh, Morty. And Ricky Boyd, who I mentioned, plays Doug the Slug. And James uh, actually made the two raccoon puppets. Wow. Uh, and John Kennedy, he constructed Doug and Sparky. Wow. So lots of giftedness um, happening in the and with those those four helping bring this every scene to life. Well, that's that's really neat to hear. And I, you know, I hadn't <clears throat> actually thought of it quite in that way before, but you've given me something new to think about because you're right. As I think about the show, uh, the puppets are being attentive, and um, and and the detail in them is amazing. It's when, the first time I saw a Doug blink, I thought, "Wow, that is like." How did they do that? You know, because it, <laughs> know. It, it's obviously a very well made and and I would think, um, you know, very intricate uh, puppet to make. And and it's it's one thing to you know have 
uh, you know, we mentioned Mr. Rogers. His his puppets were were not very elaborate. You know, they're basically just dolls on your hands. The mouths didn't move or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but yours, you know, they really are like Muppets in the sense that they're moving around. I mean, you can almost hear them breathing. You know, like the the movements they have, the eye blinks, and uh, yeah. the way they do it. It's it, the it, it, you're right. It really is something that that they get lost. And I wonder what it is about. Um, puppets when they're really done well i'm sure you have experienced this uh with children and, and adults as well but as you just said we tend to forget that it's a puppet and and start thinking of it as a real person and i and i've seen this you know when i'm standing next to a child and the puppeteer is plainly seen and their mouth is moving and they're talking to you you know but children especially will get lost in that puppet being real and talking to them and they'll tell things to that puppet. They'll just kind of open up sometimes. And um, it's it's fascinating to me the way that, that puppets connect. And I'm really glad to see that the puppets are practical and not CGI in any way. Um, there, yes. There's a little bit of animation in the show. Um, but but the, it's really fun to see, like, actual real, like, practical effects when it comes to those type things. Yes. Yeah, and I, I got to tell you, Rick, there was there were many times when I would be – in a scene with a puppet and I totally forget that they're not the person talking to me. <laughs> I think the puppeteers, they're so fun and sneaky. Um, they would all the time be trying to get me mm. to, 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 to sort of reveal how I'm, I've, I've forgotten the Maggie, the, the girl that was uh, Alyssa playing Maggie. She would always talk to me or very often between, between takes with, with Maggie like as if she's a performer. So sure. I would be, there was one, this one couple scenes where she's actually uh, lying down underneath the set and her arm is coming up through a hole and I, we're sitting down next to each other. And, um, you know, we do a scene and they say cut and you just kind of like exhale to, to get ready for the next scene. And Maggie, the raccoon turns her little head towards me and says, um, I don't know. I think I, I think we might have got that one. What do you think? And I turn towards her and start talking like, ah, I don't know. I think I might need a. Uh, and then I realize, Alyssa, you know, I, I've for, totally forgotten that I'm that I'm looking right in the face of the puppet. <laughs> as if that's that's who's talking to me. Uh, so it it was it's astounding being around him. And honestly, a. A, like a childhood dream come true mm. is growing up watch watching uh you know Bert and Ernie and Kermit the Frog and mm -hmm. and uh Fozzie the Bear and imagining being around them and what that might be like and then to have Doug and Sparky and Morty and Maggie all kind of around my uh you know up, up or just walking around me was it was like being a little kid that's awesome that is so cool. Well, I'm curious, what are the, the plans now that the, the production is done on it and DVDs are starting to go out? And I know you, you've been selling those and sending them to people who bought them. Um, it, are, are there any plans in the future for like getting the show on Netflix or Amazon Prime or any sort of streaming services or things like that? Well, you know, it's on Right Now Media and um, that uh, that they were – they helped us make it. Okay. So um, that, uh, was a huge part of even being able to, you know, have a budget for the show. Sure. Um, and, um, I'm sure that as we, as things grow, uh, the producers, Brock Starnes from, um, Brentwood Studios and Chris Wall, they have, you know, big dreams and, and designs on, on, and ambitions for, things in the future. But honestly, I, um, this is all so new. This whole world is so new mm -hmm. and I think it's healthy for me to just feel like it's just all gravy. Mm -hmm. um, that's well for, for your Northerner listeners, maybe <laughs> that that's something <laughs> my family used to always say. It's like, to, I have no, I had no expectations for it. And as a result, no, um, everything that happens for it is just a big bonus. Hmm. I'm still making records and I'm still doing shows and I'm still, um, you know, now that I'm writing books, I'm writing a few more of those. Um, 
And there may be a, pl- a, a place for it to grow in the future. I think we are talking about doing season two. That's great. Um, and but that's not really my lane as far as knowing how to grow those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, I'm I'm super excited about having the opportunity to be in in the television medium, mm-hmm. just because it allows me to um to expand on the themes that previously I've only had you know between two and four minutes to expand on. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're writing songs, you, you if you're writing a song about you know, a faith uh, or doubt um, or adoption or um, yeah, any kind of uh, or Mexican food. Yeah. You've only got you've only got a, you know a couple of minutes to say what you want to say. And with the TV show, we're allowed to. We have the time and some. You know, you can breathe into um, issues and. The opportunity to speak, um, to model uh, faith, so you're and to speak directly to a kid, well, to a puppet that's playing a kid, and know that children are watching. Yeah. Um, that is a it is a a really exciting opportunity. Um, you know, a part of what drives me and motivates me is it took me till my you know late twenties really, um, to start digging into what it means to be the Lord's Mm. and to walk around in the world knowing that he is, I am his and he is mine. And that's not just something you sing in a song, but it's what, it's the beat of my heart. And it's what moves me through the day and keeps me from, uh, despair, um, and all the traps that are set by self-absorption and fear and self-concern. Um, it, yeah, the gospel sets us free from all of that. And so, and as a kid, um, I was confused about that. And, and I don't think it's because of, I mean, I, my parents were believers. I grew up in the church and there's an element to growing as a believer that just takes time and maturity. But, I, I, part of what drives me is wanting to help kids as early as they can to begin to wrestle with the reality that we have this life, this, where we have a body and our heart beats and we walk around in this world that's been made and we are material. But in order to really live in this life, we, we have a, a spirit and a soul that we get to engage with the power that that swings the stars. Mm. And as we do remember him and find our life in him, that's where real joy is found. And that's where real life and freedom from anxiety and freedom from anger, that's where all that stuff is found. And it's what I pray for, for my kids. Mm. Um, and so it's what drives the, the messaging and the, the spirit of everything I do with the, the books and the music and the TV show, all of it is sort of, uh, you know, flowing, hopefully, towards uh, whoever comes across it, bringing a greater revelation and realization to what in the world we're doing here on this planet yeah. and why we matter. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're helping disciples to be made, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. It's, it's such a, a valuable thing. And and it's not just again before we run out of, of time together today, Randall. Um, I know you have a couple of, of new books related to this too that are. Um, I think at the time that this episode's released, they'll just be coming out. Uh, the the Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society books. Yes, uh, yes. And and you have some other books that have already released before, but these are some some brand new ones that are coming out through B and H Publishing, I believe. Um, do, do you want have anything you want to share with us about that before our, our yes. time runs out? today yes the extraordinary uh the the society of extraordinary raccoon society is now uh it now exists in book form those were some of the most fun uh tracks to record on the on sing the bible volume two and three uh getting um, buddies to come in and play raccoons and of course sally lloyd jones comes in and and plays ping pong uh, (laughs) and 
Um, and it was, it was exciting to get to put them on a book. And my buddy Joe Sutfin, uh, who illustrated the new, uh, Wing Feather, the series of Wing Feather novels for Andrew Peterson's, um, Wing Feather saga, he, he illustrated these two books. Um, and the, the two books are inspired by the, the songs from the record. And for, for people that don't know and have no experience with what in the world is a society of extraordinary raccoon society, it is a society of extraordinary raccoons who are in the process of reforming. So they, uh, they, raccoons have a bad rap in the world, scavenging and stealing. And the Society of Extraordinary Raccoons Society is um, built to uh, to help raccoon kind um, to grow and reform and become more civilized. <laughs> and uh, they only have they have uh, varying degrees of success at that. And in the in these two books, Maggie and Morty Raccoon, who are from now in the show, they in the first book. They enter into the Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society for the first time, uh, or they find out about it and are interest, introduced to it. And then in the second book, um, they have become uh, members, mm. and um, we get to watch them wrestle with uh, the new expectations of what it means to be a um, uh in the Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society. And what I wanted to do was make it, um, uh, you know, as Christians, the, one of the easiest mistakes for us to make is to think that it's about how we behave. Yeah. And that if we can just behave better, then we, that is how we can mark our growth as Christians. If we behave better, then we're doing better. But of course, that's not the case. It's our, our, our status as believers only is rooted in our acceptance in Christ and the blood he shed for us. So um, how we communicate that in the Extraordinary Raccoon Society is by showing how um, rather than our um, – rather than our motivation being let's do better – and then watch ourselves, sorry, watch ourselves to grow um, and get better as we try to do better. Instead, the more it's the more that we are able to see how loved we are and how accepted we are, that transforms us from within so that then we begin to act differently. Because uh, as we are growing into this new family, as the raccoons are settling into being loved and and um, not shamed when they do mess up, they begin to want to change as their hearts change from inside. So that's the the spirit of the books, but they're really fun and, and really silly. And they're they're uh, books number three and four uh, of the four Slugs and Bugs stories that we released this year. Well, that's terrific. And and you mentioned Joe Sutphin too. And I actually have the the B and H Publishing Group website on right now, just kind of looking through. Uh, some of the illustrations they they give you some previews of and um and I have uh, several mutual friends with Joe and and I haven't ever met him myself but I believe he just lives down the road from me here in Columbus Ohio not too far away or he did it one time uh, yes and, that's right and he so, does a you. you're right he does a, a wonderful job illustrating these books and I've I've been a fan of his art for a while he he's somebody I ought to have on the show sometime just so we can talk about his work but. He really has done a great job. It, it, I haven't read the books yet, but just from looking at the way that um, he's telling the story through pictures as you're doing it through the writing, it, it's really beautiful. They're very well done. So I'm excited for you on this. This is excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been really fun. I didn't Yeah, I didn't see this chapter of writing children's books coming so soon, but, but uh, it's been a very exciting opportunity. So uh, next year, there's a book that I wrote for um, – for the good book company coming out in, I think it's in April. Oh, um, and that's going to have it. So it's going to have been five books in a matter of about like 14 months. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> Which well, I, I don't recommend. It was, a, <laughs> it was stressful. Um, yeah. but, uh, 
but also I just, you know, super grateful and excited about it and hopefully that people will find them fun and engaging and, and enriching. Well, I am so excited for you, as I know all of our listeners are as well, and I want to let everybody know who's listening that we're going to have links to all these things in the show notes at VoicesInMyHeadPodcast.com, but I also want to let people know that they can go to SlugsAndBugs.com, and uh, if you just do a Google search of Slugs and Bugs, you're, you're sure to find a lot about them, and I do want to make sure our listeners head to those places, because uh, these are really good things to invest in, I think, and our children are, are great treasures, and um, and I, I don't just buy everything that comes along for, for our son, you know, I really want it to be something that, that hopefully is good quality, and, and I do love that this is a help in, in the journey of making disciples in our homes, and so I really appreciate what you've done. Let, let me ask one more uh, question today before our time is done, and I don't know if you'll even be able to answer this, um, but you are a person who is now wearing a lot of different hats, you know, you're a songwriter, you're a singer, now with the show, you're an actor, um, um, you know, in, in some ways, you, you've been really helping to run this show, and you're an author. Um, are, are there any of those uh, those hats that you're wearing that you you say you just really love the best, or is it sort of like you're just enjoying them all as they come? <laughs> that is a good question. Well, I can tell you that when you said actor, I kind of just like shook my head to myself because I'm the one person on the show that just gets to play myself. So <laughs> I'm not, I am a terrible actor when I'm trying to be anybody else. So, uh, so, uh, I wanted to make sure I, uh, said that, but, um, you know, I think the one thing that I, I do love to do and would, would continue to do, even if, um, if, you know, it was we were in a post-apocalyptic world uh would be i i i love to write music yeah. um, i love to write songs um and i and i also love to think about the gospel mm -hmm. uh when i used to when i first started slugs and bugs i articulated really for myself first what what were the most important things for me about what was driving what I do and maybe making it different and important to me. And it was, I love the gospel mm -hmm. and I, uh, it's important to me to be able to articulate it, um, for families to help them grow in the gospel together with their kids. Mm -hmm. And I love, um, to be, to, to create things with excellence. Mm -hmm. So I, I just get inspired by beauty and things that are really, really well done. So, I'm always trying to set the bar higher than I can reach mm -hmm. to uh, make things beautiful. Um, and children deserve that with the things that we give them. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I love to be silly. I, <laughs> I love to, to have the opportunity to not take myself seriously because in so much of life, so often I forget and I do take myself seriously. So to have, to have part of my job be, Stop taking yourself too seriously. It's like, it's great medicine for me. Um, so with those three things, the, uh, to be able to articulate the gospel to families, to be able to try to make something excellent, excellently, and to get to have fun and be silly while I do it, those three things, they can, they can fall into all those categories that you mentioned, whether it's TV or writing books or making music. Um, that's, so it, as long as I get to keep doing those, doing those three things in whatever medium, then I'm I'm a happy guy. Yeah, that's terrific. You know, I told you that was going to probably be my last question, but I do have one more because I know you're going to be on the road uh, doing some slugs and bugs uh, concerts and events along the way. Um, what can people expect? I I personally have never had a chance to see it live. Uh, what can people expect when they come to one of your your uh, your concerts? Oh, uh, so yes, uh, we do. I do concerts all over the country and in and out of the country and they're super fun. I, it's me up on stage. Usually there's a few people that get up on stage with me. Um, and I switch off different instruments and we play some animated videos up behind me so people can see words and sing along. And there's some funny characters up there, but, uh, the, the, the thrust of the, 
of the concert is it's an opportunity for parents and kids to have fun together mm -hmm. so that parents are sitting by their children. They're doing hand motions. They're being silly. They're dancing around and singing scripture together. Um, and just in general, having a, having a big old time mm -hmm. so that it, and it's in, happening in the context of the gospel. So we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about, um, God's love for us and his promises. But then we're also talking about Mexican food and trying not to get eaten by bears. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, so it's uh, an opportunity to hopefully reflect to kids um, in a musical kind of way, what life is like, like mm -hmm. it's, you just get to walk in, walk through the world and everything that happens in the context of a believer, all of it finds its context in, in Jesus. And we can celebrate and we can have fun and um, even be a little sad now and then. Um, I don't get too sad in concerts because that would <laughs> – but uh, but so, yeah, there's a lot of standing up and sitting down and waving your hands and and um, drinking from a cup and making bear claws, no, uh, get kids up on the stage. So, crazy. yeah, we just have a big old time. Well, good. Well, again, I encourage our listeners uh, to go and check that all out because chances are you'll be coming to a, a neighborhood near them in the near future. At, uh, yeah. so, go, so if they all go to slugsandbugs.com, they can find out all of that information. And, and I, I expect the way things are going, we're going to have slugs and bugs on ice very soon. You know, with, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> something I'm a like that. Eater, so I, <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, Randall, this has been a, a wonderful conversation. I want to thank you again for just taking time to come and share. Uh, I'm very proud of you and everybody, really, who has been involved over the years uh, with these slugs and bugs projects in all of their various forms. And it's just so good to see the good things that God is doing and the way that you are um, being so careful, I, I believe, in, in trying to follow God where he leads with this. And it's it's just a wonderful thing. It's so good to see God blessing. So as I say to my guests each week on this show, Randall Goodgame, thank you for being one of the voices in my head. Thank you, Rick. It is such a such a sweet privilege and pleasure to sit and talk with you. I love the work that you do and how you're pouring out your gifts for the kingdom over there in Ohio. So I'm honored. Thanks for having, having me on. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me here this week on Voices in My Head. I hope you'll visit me on my website at rickleejames.com where you can find out more about me. Get my music on vinyl and CD, follow my blog, and even schedule me for a concert or a speaking engagement. Better yet, even a book signing in your neighborhood. You can find all that and more at rickleejames.com. Also, it would mean a great deal to me if you could write a review of this podcast on iTunes. The more positive reviews that we receive, the more visible this podcast will be online. And now, for the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. God bless you, and thank you for listening to Voices in My Head.